Conversation series this week, this today, we are uh, honoring Women History Month as we do from time to time. We have an all women panel. Um, our topic today is what women want. Uh, the rules we gave us are real simple. If you got a question, just raise your hand. If you're in the audience, you got a question, just raise your hand and we'll get the we'll get the nod. We have a microphone, so you can walk to the mall and state your, your question. If you think that you can speak loud enough, um, you don't have to do that. Because I have a I have a PE voice, so I very rarely need a microphone. So um, our rules of engagements are very very simple. Um, respect the mic. Just try not to over talk one another. But we do understand that sometimes when the conversation gets good, we get you know, and we are black folk. <laughs> so. Um, but we just but we just saying, you know, we, I'm just saying to be respectful. If I try to get it, um, I'm saying this now so that when we're doing, so when it's happening then it doesn't come across being respectful. I'm probably going to try to get more out of the question or more, more out of the comment as it stated, Tori and I. So um, uh, and another rule we like to put in play is some but not some but not all. When we're talking um, on a thing. Uh, it's real easy for people to find the one person that they know in this world who never did it that way to be the example. And we're not trying to have a conversation. We're talking about isolated. We talk about you got to keep the conversation as general and as general as possible. So we're talking about what we're talking about. 
We're not talking about what we're not talking about. So that being said, um, I would first like to introduce my co-host, Ms. Katora Gannon. From a new you hair and spa is, is, is where she do her thing, located at? 10 South East Street, Eagle. Eagle. Okay. Um, and then joining us today, we have Miss Keisha S. Morgan. Please tell them a little bit about you. All right. So my name is Keisha. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Florida native. Uh, I, I guess I'm an entrepreneur. I have. You guess you're an entrepreneur? Well, See, that's that thing that women do sometimes that like, really kind of like hurt me. If you're an entrepreneur or you guess you're an entrepreneur? I'm a businesswoman. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm partners with the financial firm. So what we do is we teach individuals and families about financial literacy. So we tell them how, you know, credit is important. So if someone comes to me and they're like, oh, I need my credit restored, well, we help them get to that point. We teach them how to understand, you know, you know, there's a myth saying that credit has to be there for seven to ten years. It's not. We teach them how to make sure a debt can fall off and teach them how to create their dispute letters. And then we have other things like bills and trusts. And, um, you know, we help them get started with funding their business if needed. Uh, I'm a podcast host. And I do have a nonprofit for female entrepreneurs. The nonprofit is? It's called Her Hill Society. And my podcast is called Hurt Hill Society. The reason why I went with Hurt Hills is because it's the analogy to the woman's footstep in her career path. So, boom. Okay. Now, how can anybody can find you on all your social media platforms as? Um, so, Facebook is just like Keisha S. Morgan. And then uh, Hurt Hill Society is um, there's at Hurt Hill Society podcast on IG and then Hurt Hill Society 501c3 um, on Instagram. Thank you. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And next we have joining us is Eddie Education. Yes. Did I get it right? Adeline. 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 Esperance. Esperance. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Tell us, tell us about you. Yes. So my name is Adeline Esperance. I do go by Eddie Education on Facebook. Um, I'm currently a substitute teacher. Um, I go to the University of Central Florida. I'm currently uh, trying to get my master's degree in clinical social work. I do have a year left. Um, I'm also a secretary for a sister Inc. And uh, we are a nonprofit that caters to black and brown single mothers in the community. So we provide services such as um, we actually have Thank you. Back to back? Okay. Hello. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'll get I'll give you a little bit of Okay, so we're back, and um, say so social media is social media gets a bad rap. It's like today everybody want to blame everything on the on the internet, on yeah. social media. Oh, social media make people crazy. No, people have been crazy <laughs> for a long time. Social media is just what they're using today to demonstrate their kid crazy. So. Um, uh, Yeah, Bill Cosby, and I'm a, I'm a fan of his comedy. Before all that stuff happened, I just talked about Bill Cosby. <laughs> and Bill Cosby was talking, and he said something about um, he was asking somebody about use, the use of cocaine, and somebody said, "Well, the cocaine it really brings out your personality." And he said, "But what are you an asshole?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. it just you know just that's so, and I think that's what social media does. Just like a version of cocaine. It just allows an asshole to be a big asshole, a jerk, you know, whatever. So um, it's the 
the reality is it's like it's a tool. And how you use that tool is up to the person that's yielding to. Some people are very good craftsmen. You give somebody a hammer and a nail, and they can do some wonderful things with it. You give somebody else a hammer and a nail, they might be nailing frogs to the ceiling. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so um, I don't think we can blame it. So I'm, 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 I, want to, I want to just kind of put that there because um, the whole goal is, is here at this table, the conversation before the conversation. Our goal is to have conversation about relationship to dig as deep as we possibly can within the time period that we have to explore and examine as much as we possibly can um, in a safe space, right? So when we call it a conversation for the conversation because um, our aim is that when we're in this conversation that someone someone's going to say something that can be used when they're having conversation when they're having the other conversation at home in their relationship. So that's why we call it the conversation before the conversation. Um, now that being said, our topic for the day is what women want. What do they want? What women want? Now that's the question that all these other questions are going to help us answer. So that being said, we're going to start off with what makes a good man? What makes a man a good man? What makes him a good father? And what makes him a good husband? What makes a man, a good man. Yes, ma'am. Would you please? Let's start. First of all, that's a question that you literally are putting a, a man in a box. Because what is a good man to me may not be a good man to her. And so now you're, now you're starting to, um, those type of questions to me tend to box a man off or a woman off. Because, um, of course, that everyone's going to go with a great provider. Mm -hmm. But what about a great listener? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what about what about the things that you know? What, what, like I say, what may mean something to you may not mean something to me. Some people think a great man is a man that is spiritual. Some some women believe that that's a great man. Um, some women believe that a great man, like I say, is a provider. Some believe a great man is one who caters to them. So with all that being said, it's kind of a of an opinion. Okay, so so what I okay, what I thought what I thought I heard you say was that when we try to answer that question. We're going. There's no way to answer that question without limited beliefs. A limited belief system. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, then is it fair to say that there's no such thing as a good or a bad man? That a man is just a man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's truly fair. Because once again, society has put everything in boxes and everything is traditional, and so. What your grandma might have thought was a great man <laughs> might not be a great man, you know. And we have, for years, have have moved on what someone else said something should have been or what something should be. And um, I don't run my house like that, but some people do. Some people literally run their house on what someone told them life should be. Yeah. So because I I. I say I talk about that in this, in this framework. I like to say we are operating off of an outdated relationship template. Yeah, pretty much. We're not updated. So, anyone else would like to tap into what is a good man? What makes a man a good man? 
Um, so I agree with what um, Ketura. Ketura was saying. <laughs> it is, the question is kind of like, like open-ended. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's opinion is different and it's based on, on you know, their experience. Right. Um, I know for sure one of the things for me, I do want him to be, I want him to have some sort of belief system and not just believe in himself. Because then it's like, where did you get this from? He's like, oh, I got this from me, you know? Yeah, yeah. But like, does vengeance like self worship? What's wrong with that? Well, for me, I think he should have a belief system other than just himself. Like, believing in himself is good. But like for me, I just recently I experienced like being delivered and stuff, and then I started walking down the um, Christian path. I don't say I'm like religious, but I do believe in the Bible, and I, and I it's the words in the Bible give me hope. So I do want them to have. I want them to believe in that too. I want them to be able to like study and worship. But that, okay, but if that works for you, that's why does it have to work for him? But that is my preference. That's just what I'm saying for him. Like, that's what I prefer. Well, you're him. That is what I prefer. You gotta pick up the Bible. Can we, like, study what Jesus did 25 years, 25,000 years ago? Can we just study it? Like, I'm not, I'm not. And, and it does depend on his character and stuff, but I'm saying that's just one of the things. I'm not gonna completely, like, because I'm an open minded person, or I try to be, so I'm not gonna shut a person off because they stop reading the Bible because a lot of people have turned away based on people in the church house and then they figure their actions they don't want to just this, yeah, this book make them do that I don't want to yeah. do that so I'm like gonna they're not on. they're not understanding that even like Jesus said like you know based what I'm telling you based on people's characters and their actions so for me just to circle that around <laughs> for me one little highlight is that he has some type of spirit some type of belief system other than himself okay so can he can he hindu i'll say two questions so does that make him a good man so for you it, it doesn't make him a good man because there's still more to it but it enlightens me on like his character like how he sounds like you want to pray to the same god right, right. And see, and you were going down the Hindu path. Yeah, I'm going there because it could, well. Well, you said, you said he just has to have a belief system. A belief system. system. Right. A belief system. But I did refer, like, the Bible. Right, so see, you want to refer to the same God. Right. Eddie? <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you prefer I, Eddie or? Eddie's fine. Okay. Yeah, Eddie's fine. Um, I'm sorry, your name? Katora. 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 I do agree that what is good and what is bad in today's society is subjective. Mm -hmm. I, I do agree with that. However, um, me personally, I need, um, I, I would want a man who is grounded um, in, in whatever it is that he decides to do, that he is grounded. There's like a stability there. You know, can you lead me without controlling me? Can we, mm -hmm. be, That's good. Yeah. can we have a conflict and it not turn into an argument? Do you know how to de-escalate? Mm -hmm. there's, there's a certain level of grounding that I need you to have. If I'm up here, can you be down here and then get me down here to with you so that we can solve this problem? Or are you just fire, fire, I'm throwing fire, you throwing fire, can you de-escalate? That's, that's a good man to me, where you can objectively look at the situation and say, I don't want to win. I want peace. Mm -hmm. I want to bring things back to balance. I hear you. I have said a number of times, my wife, this is not a competition. I think when we are, uh, when we're in it, mm -hmm. we are in it. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we can be triggered by in and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, the challenge is, okay, can we listen and actually listen? Or are we listening for the one little thing that we need to cling to so that they actually not listen? Mm -hmm. right. So, so what makes what makes a good what makes a man a good man? What makes a, what makes him a good father? 
engagement, engaging with the child, not just you got your kids for the weekend and you on the phone like this. What y'all doing? <laughs> That's not engaging with your child. Are you having conversation? Do you know what's going on? Do you know what grades look like? So what's transpired over the last two weeks when you weren't physically there? I like I, I, I find it interesting that he ain't in the house. In your scenario. Yeah. 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 the same thing. Right. Yeah. Not the wife. No, no, no. That's the same thing. That's the same thing. That's the That's my truth. Yeah. Well, I that's how I'm speaking. I don't know what that's. No, no, no. That's my truth. Okay. I can only go by. I'm, I'm going to go by the numbers. The numbers say eighty percent. Mm -hmm. Very high. Eighty percent. That's that's ridiculously high. You know, that's that's eighty percent. Yes, sir. Can I ask a question though? So, um, so the question was, what was a good man? So you're saying a weekend dad is like the ideal man? No. What makes him a good father in regards to my personal life? Because I have two children, so I don't know what a good father looks like in house. I didn't grow up without a father, and now my two children are growing up without a father. So I can only speak on what I'm experiencing. I can't speak for nobody else. Well, I mean, but so that's on your list of being a good man. If, if you are there for your child, if you are engaging, whether you're in-house or not, because there are in-house fathers that are physically present and they're emotionally absent. That happens too. They're just they, They're not engaging with their kids. They're not hugging their kids. They're not kissing their kids. So for me, whether the man is in the house or out the house, if they are physically, emotionally present with the child, that for me is a good father. Right. What makes him a good husband? Okay. Well, I'll speak on that. I'll yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, 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 I'm
on that in that same scenario. I am um, me and my first wife divorced. We had two. We had three children. I came back to Eatonville, the oldest black incorporated town in the United States. Knocked on my wife's door because I had this image of her when she was six years old, just standing on the porch with this skirt on. We came down to her knees with these long white socks. That's you know we're talking about the sixties. <laughs> So I'm like, but, I, but I remember that skirt and I remember them socks. And so when I got back and I was coming, the dog I'm going when he knocked on the door. <laughs> right? So when we so when we got together, I came with kids, she came with kids. So we're both step parents. Right? That's that's what they like, that's what the term they like to use. As far as we're concerned, we're both parents. So we think so so it is challenging. I can I'm gonna guess right and i think it's a good a good guess to say that it's challenging for the woman to come into a situation where she's with the man who has children right but i'm not a woman so i, I don't get that piece but from but from the man's side it is challenging especially when you i've watched so many women previously in conversation when they use the term my kids mm. right my kids this even when me and my first wife divorced she said, my kids. And I had to have a real hard conversation and say, don't say that to me no more. Because they're ours. You wouldn't have them without me. I know you carried them, but I gave them to you to care. So I think sometimes we mix that up, right? Because it's real, it's like, this actually, it's wild. There's actually an argument now about um, the children belong to the mother because she carried them, right? And and, and I've, I've heard it in a number of conversations where they but I cared them for nine months. All right, that was your part. But I gave, I planted the seed, and the seed grew in you. So I chose you to fertilize the soil, and now the baby is with you, and I chose you to, to, to be the one that's going to care, that's going to nurture, it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you sound good because you say you chose. I, I, I chose. I chose Ray Ray's mom. I said, it just it just happened, and now yeah, I don't know who I got to give it to. I said, that was like, so that's not a choice. No, you chose. They chose. They chose. Just because the bad choice doesn't mean it's not your choice. Yeah, but that's not the bad choice. 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 That's not even like the situation where you think they didn't choose, no, he chose. Yes. He, he might have didn't chose okay. wisely, but he still chose. He got yeah, to take yeah, that yeah, 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 situation. He chose to have that situation. He chose to be his big mom. He chose to have that situation. He did. And in that situation came with the baby. We don't actually frame it like the way Devin just did. But on, on, on a on a um it's not that that way of framing is not institutionalized into in society. It's not a fabric of how we move when it comes to that. And that is an issue because a man needs to know you choose. Maybe you choose. You do this, you choose. But well, can I speak on, on the side of a woman right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so you said you don't know how it is for women when they um marry into a, a family with the um the children. It's real hard, especially if that woman ain't really gone. Woo, woo. <laughs> she ain't No, just, yeah, but I'm saying it's really hard for a woman. Sometimes she won't admit it. She just go in her car and cry or call her home girl and cry. But I promise you if the man you're dating has children and his ex-wife, ex-baby mama, whoever she is, whatever however they're going to call it, the one he chose, 
<laughs> have not shown somebody else, and that somebody else didn't keep her comfortable and happy. Who the hell is your life? Yeah. I just heard that is very much true. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's not easy. You know, women, oh, that's a lot to bear. I understand. I, listen, I get from the man's side. And, well, my husband has to worry about that because who, who chose me? And he chose to run and run and run and run. And so he just came on me and put he ain't got to worry about him, but I'm saying, for those who stick around, it's, it's, that's a lot. It's a lot. Oh, Lord. Well, um, I, will, I, will, I was, I was, I say this, I've said this a number of times on the show. Um, like, um, I did a, uh, everybody know, everybody here know Cornell Bush? Are familiar with Cornell Bush? Mental health? So, um, yeah, so I did, I did a thing with Cornell on, on his panel and, and some questions were put to Cable and I, and I remember saying on that show, um, we got a real issue with truth in a relationship. We have a, a hard time being honored and being integrous, integrous when it comes to being in a relationship. Like um, we were talking before the show started, and we were talking about games. Everybody's taught game. Women are taught, hey, girl, if you do it like this, you do it like that, you get it like this, you get it like that. And guys are taught, yo, dog, you do it like this, you do it like that, you get it like this, you get it. So we're taught, we're taught to not be genuine and be honorable from the beginning of the conversation. Right? So if you've been taught to hustle the man, and a man has been taught to hustle you, that goes to my shirt. You get who you are, at the moment you are that thing. <laughs> right, so, so, so sometimes we like to say the relationship that we were dealing with was a mistake. It ain't never a mistake. The universe ain't playing with you. So if you just haven't gotten to a place where you are willing to admit your role in, in your life in terms of the things that don't feel good to you or don't look or get, or you think don't look good to other people. But that, but again. That framework we talked when we were talking earlier about what makes a man a good man. We're talking about someone who's being someone who's grounded. Um, what do you think? I'm I'm gonna frame this in the question, ladies. If you when you hear the statement, a man, man grounded, manhood is manhood is not manhood is not manhood is manhood is rebellious, manhood is free. Does that sit well with you? Yeah, I said, I don't even make it. It doesn't? Mm -hmm. But I ain't no man, so I, yeah, I gotta get my girlfriend to do it. To me, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so you have, uh, you have children. I do. Boys? Any boys? Two girls. Two girls. I got okay. a boy, a you whole 33 year old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm a grown man. Okay. So when, when we're looking at, if you could think back until like third grade, fourth grade. Uh -huh. That's when boys start deciding which direction they're going to go in terms of their development, right? They around around seven years old, and then around seventh grade. So we're talking about third grade, seventh grade, around third grade, between seventh, third grade, third and seventh grade. Typically speaking, that's where it all gets sorted out. So we have a system that says that a young boy who is questioning when he's in school is a bad boy. When they're throwing kids out of the classroom, like the teacher says, do so and so and so and so and so. And the boy's like, why we gotta do that? That's a question. Mm -hmm. But it comes across as being unruly. Yeah. Right? But what, what, what I think gets missed or that's, that's not considered is manhood is freedom. Manhood is about in, about paving his own way, right? So in the system, this, when we put him in school, we're basically saying we, we want everybody to get the same, right? Everybody sit down in the classroom, learn the same thing, and they don't even care for the most part what your intelligence 
level, where you are in, in terms of intelligence and in terms of academics, you're 13 years old, so you're supposed to be over here, right? And then those kids who are 13 years old who, who seem to be extra extraordinary, right, they'll say, oh, he's special, and they might move into a different class. But typically speaking, they want everybody to pretty much be the same, right? So I'm telling you, I apologize. I'm taking a long time to get where I'm going. It's going to be, it's, it's going to be, worth, it's going to be worth the ride. So, if it's the nature of a boy, is if the nature of manhood is freedom, and freedom itself is defined as being rebellious, not wanting to do what everybody else wants me to do, just because they want me to do it. And then when I ask you why I'm seen now and labeled as a bad boy because you don't have the answer to my question or you don't want to take the time to answer my question so now, now an argument ensues a war begins to take place you're trying to retain manhood so you're asking what i'm what i'm saying is that is that is that is yeah. This is not is not bad, right? So we, we so when we're when we're dealing so when we're dealing with a man who has gone through man, this is, this is challenging. Okay. To be to be to be to be to be successful in this society, right? You got to play the game. Right, which means you got to do a whole lot of compromise. You got to do a whole lot of acquiescence. Right, so typically speaking, you can't have what the world likes to call success unless you acquiesce, unless you submit as a man. Okay. Right. So, so now when you are looking for a husband, someone to be with. You using society standards about what a man is in terms of being successful. Are you attaching yourself to a man or someone who act, who has a, who's learned to acquiesce? So maybe let's say fit in. Are we have we considered that? Can you say more? Yeah. Um. I. I love masculine energy. And I love for a man to know what he wants and knows how to get it, regardless of what society says right. about it. Because when I'm at home, I have to maneuver in between feminine and masculine. I have to maneuver in between that because I got two kids. Right. So I got to be mommy. Then I'm doing my homework, and I got it's time to switch it into my. Can't nobody save me. Ain't nobody doing my homework for me. So I got to save myself. So I dip into my masculine, and here come my five year old. Okay, back into my feminine. So if a masculine energy comes around and I can rest, mm -hmm. I like that. Takes all the pressure off. And if you if you do that in a way that's rebellious, I'm okay with that. If you're not hurting yourself, you're not hurting anyone, you're not getting arrested, <laughs> you're elite, you're doing things English. People might not like your attitude, people might not like your because sometimes when you have a lot of confidence, it comes across as arrogance to someone that doesn't have as much confidence as you. Right. So he might just be a very confident man. He's been doing what he's doing 10, 15 years, and he just got a, a, some sort of bravado about himself. He may not know what he's doing. He still has that bravado. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just, you know, that, it's that masculine. He knows what he's doing, and he's doing it good. You know what I mean? So that's a track. That's a track. Masculine is a track. Masculine is a track. Okay, so why don't we have... From the from the woman's side, and I have my way of looking at it. So, but I'm asking the questions on the table. Why do we have? What is a man? What is a masculine man? What do you, as a woman, who has to spend more time in her masculine energy, um, 
what do you see relationships like when you are engaging with the masculine, a man who's in his masculine? How does that play out? Okay, say that again. If you're spending so much, if you're spending time in your, you spending more time in your masculine energy, and you need a man who's who's a masculine man, so you got these two masculine energies coming together. How do you see that relationship playing out in terms of how the man is to relate to you? You. Like the one that has the masculine energy, mm -hmm. they're probably always bumping heads. Uh, not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. There's an adjustment period mm -hmm. because you're used to doing everything on your own. Right. You know. So if the man comes in and he knows that you're a single mom, <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're a single mom, so you're used to doing everything on your own. So say for example, something like opening my own door. Right. A masculine man will get in front of the door and. <laughs> That's my job. You won't say it. Yeah. You just, Give you I'm a look, here now. Yeah. Right? You, and you're like, you're like, and I, you're like, and I, I'm like, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. excuse me. You're not used to that. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and he allows you to adjust. Okay. You know, okay. while he takes the lead without taking the phone. So I'm, I'm a little older than you know, and.
I was the, I was the father in the, the, the mother. Nah, no, you yeah. just you just the mother. Yeah. And, and 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 you and you tried to overcompensate, and I still picked up negative traits because of it. And it, it was no fault of yours. It's just that it's just that because you had that idea that hey, there's no man there, so I got to be both. No, you still be the mother. Yeah. And so like that's. I, no, that, 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 is, no that, that is true, and that is something that, like I said, that we have to talk about all the time because, um, we, we, yeah, we we are we do have some masculine energy. We do some of us have we got we <laughs> too, too much. much. <laughs> like we have to unplug. It's too yeah. much. Um, it's really too much. And like I said, I come from a a, a home that. There was no man in the house, so work is all I knew because that's what I watched what they did, and I just mimicked what they did. And what my grandmother did was open up multiple businesses and work, 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 work. So that happened to me. It was very hard when my husband was like, "Um, why are you still at the salon? And it's eleven thirty, twelve o'clock. Well, like you ain't got no man." Mm. Mm. In my mind, I'm thinking I gotta get my money because. I remember the days when there was no money. There was no, you know what I'm saying? It was right. just me. I was the only income that was coming in. And it was very, very, very hard for me to submit and sit back and say, I don't need to work 29 hours a day. This is stupid. I, I just need to go and make this man be a man. And that's the point I'm trying to make um, when I say about the masculinity. Sometimes we just won't allow the man to be the man. Now, if you got one that don't, don't say that. Now, you can be chick. Just chose. I'm just saying that's another story. Y'all go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> so the, the next question is, what makes a woman a good woman? And then, what makes her a good mother and what makes her a good wife? Well, they're not married, so they can't do the good wife. Okay. They're good women. Go ahead with that. I want you to do that. Because I don't know. I'll see what you do. So, well, I mean, first off, I think that a person should, you know, come in a relationship aware of their past traumas. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, like, I grew up in a broken home, honestly. Like, probably all that. Yeah, yeah, I learned that. Um, <laughs> like, you know, there was a man there, but he wasn't like a good man. And stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I saw abuse, and which is one reason why when I, I saw them, I said, um, that this is what marriage is about. Oh, well, want to get married. I yeah. So I purposely stayed single because I'm like, oh, no, so he can knock me outside the head. Um, but it's, it's not true. No, 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 I laugh. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, but seriously, um, and then as I got older and like I was telling Eddie before we started, um, I surrounded myself with certain women that also grew up the same way, but they started like, growing and they changed the trajectory of their, of their life, you know, financially, uh, mentally, spiritually. And, um, I'm like, oh, it is possible. And so I really... I don't know if I can say what a good woman is, but I would base her, her character, like her fruits. Um, definitely, she, she's aware of her, her brokenness, and then she started putting those pieces back together to mm -hmm. define who she is. And then, you know, like, be aware of trigger points. You know, like, you, you want somebody who is, like she said, a woman who's grounded, and then when you take care of traumas and Think back, back, like growing up as a child. When you when you are aware of those things, you know how to. You can talk to anybody, and then you know how to really love the person you want to build a relationship with. Um. So I, I hope that makes sense for me. It's, 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 it's about it's about being aware of like who you are, because a lot of people they like. Uh, what's his name? The country Chris Rock. Chris. No, Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker. Which one is on Rush Hour? Tucker. Chris Tucker. A lot of people, when you meet somebody and y'all thinking about being together romantically, they give you their representative. Oh, <laughs> they don't give you the real them. And then the more you start at talk, the more you start getting to know them, you start seeing these little red flags. And it's like, are they aware of it? 
And, and I don't even know if red flags is the right term, because y'all ears perked up when I said that. <laughs> I, don't know red, I don't know if there's such thing as red flags, but you see things that you don't want to deal with. And then, you know, they might get a reaction out of you that you didn't like, and I realized it's still trigger points for me. So I'm like, most importantly is just, just being aware of, of who you are, your roots, like uproot it all, and, and make sure that you actually heal from it so that you can, so that it can love you properly, you know? So basically what you're saying is, in a nutshell, to you what makes a good woman for you is a woman that is healing herself before she decides right. to date. Because then she can actually love you in a proper way. She, she's emotionally intelligent. Like she knows where these actions are coming from. Or if it is, a, it was a trigger point, she knows how to either exit the relationship or, or express exactly. So I have a question about that. So how long does that go on? I think healing is a never ending thing, but but you can, you see a trigger point that used to make you just flip the table, and then you no longer flip tables. Right. <laughs> That's progress. That's exactly. That's progress. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because I was, I was, but I, I, what I thought I heard you say was, um, what I thought I heard said was, heal before you get in a relationship. At least start so, something. So, so, so if, so if it's never in the story, then you ain't gonna never, you know, you, know, you never graduate from this, you never graduate from that school. No, you're just graduating from that trauma. And that trauma. Mm -hmm. And he's going to the And you're aware of it. Yeah. You, yeah. You I mean, nobody can say they know everything in the world. Right. Nobody can say, oh, I'm done learning. I, that's it. I don't need to learn anything else. Nobody says that. Okay. It's not true. Right. Yes, sir. Experience is the best teacher. Correct. I mean, you know, experience is what you, The more you hit your head, the more you're going to sit there and say, okay, well, why did I do this? Yes. Why do I keep getting in these trauma situations? So, so a thing that I learned as a man with dealing with different types of things is that when you you remember that VA commercial when yeah. they say, "Boom, you should have had a VA." Yeah. Yeah. It always comes to mind when I say, "Okay, this is a triggering situation." Boom, should have had a VA. Yeah. Let me step back. Yeah. Think about it yes. Before I go boom. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a weird analogy, but it makes, no, it makes sense. sense. Yeah. So instead of getting a woman, you should have a V8. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Ye
bring the your best foot forward at first, yeah. and then you start to digress as you get comfortable. Right, yeah. So like the trick is to like respark that same old. There you go. That's what I was saying. Wrote. That way you yeah. can like you know life is up and down. Relationships are too. Yeah. So like when you get to the bottom, something got to like spark that fire to get yeah. get that yeah. motor going. And that's what I was to trying to say. But that, but that's also 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 what you say when you like. I was go. I was given one hundred thirty two percent. Then you say some guy. The thing is, you get the mirror, bro. You can't fight. You can't fight the mirror. So you, so if you give it one hundred thirty two percent, that means you give it more than you actually come with, and that person you with is giving more than he actually come with. So then when y'all finally have won the game in y'all mind, y'all go back to normal, and then you'd be like, "Hey, what happened to that one hundred thirty two percent?" No, and I said all this. No, I said all this. When I was first, you know. I just told y'all not to shop at 12 o'clock. So I would come home early. I would actually come home early because I was liking them and I would go home and cook. <laughs> when I was doing it. But, hey, but I'm that, just, I'm that's just, why your husband called you and said, hey, what you have? You used to cook. And you like, hey, right, gotcha. Right. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm saying when truth, when truth hit the, when truth yeah. hit the table, because this is how infidelity come in. Because then it was, became very easy for someone else to start cooking. Because I was pretending that I was so cooked all the time. I was. I mean, I mean. But you understand, but you understand what I'm saying? God is when, I'm saying when I was just going to her with the red flag, the red flags, you got to go in doing what you really don't do. That's exactly. What that's the whole thing. That's not a red flag. I think that's yeah. mature. Yeah, that's what that's, that's, that's what, what I was doing. You can go in and be like. Right. Honest, it's, it's, off real, it's it's like, and be really be, be yourself. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's why I that's why I was going with that. Yeah. At the end of the be day, yourself. if you don't yeah. want all yeah. those other things that's gonna come, because they don't show up, they're gonna wear yeah. their ugly head. Mm -hmm. You don't want it. Go in completely with straight maturity. Mm -hmm. You know you're not a cook like me. You know I can. Yeah. Don't go in there acting like you're gonna be slave in that kitchen because you never look at that. That's for you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay, so I heard you say it's about re-sparking the relationship. Oh, okay. Okay, right. what if the person is purely relying on you to spark them? That's exhausting. That's the, but that's the mirror, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's, 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 so they're mirroring the mirror. each other. Yeah. Yeah. So they they don't, you know, they're not either. Yeah. Like if they're not winning, you definitely ain't either because you waiting on them. You like, why you won't do it? Yeah. <laughs> they saying the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why can't you do it? Hold on, hold on. She said, what if like the sparkings? What, what is that person? Because this is your partner, right? Oh, just hypothetical. I'm just saying. So, like, oh, yeah. but, but if like, it's your partner, think... what is your partner love language? Because that might not be their love language. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I used to see myself align myself with people that was not like me. They were total opposite. Yeah, but that's the mirror. That's yeah. what I want. I don't but, see, see, like the mirror. but it's but weird. The mirror is the mirror. opposite. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, well, okay. Got better boobs. Yeah. Like, like me, I would go to the movies or I would go out to eat. I wouldn't wait for someone to enjoy my life. And then I would connect myself with someone that yeah, did not do those know. things, did not go out. They had to be with somebody. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was exhausting. Yeah. Because they wanted me to be there all, and I, I couldn't do that. So, being that I've been married almost six years, you a baby in this thing. Yeah, I know, I know. You're a baby. But look, but congratulations. <laughs> but this is what I grew up in a household with both of my parents, and my parents have been married for years. So, in the sense of what I wanted in my household and what I took out of it, I was trying to install a woman that was not good for me. Mm. And then taught me a lesson. Right. Mm. So, therefore, when I end up meeting my wife, I say, Look, we will have performance reviews. Wow. <laughs> I love this that. Is a career. It's, a, it's a career. People don't look at it as a career. When you're out in the dating world, it's like that's your job in the like you, that three months or uh, one year, or whatever with that relationship of building and learning and stuff, you go forever learn. But at the same time, your performance in the job may not stay the same. Like you say, you gave one hundred thirty-two percent. Now I'm gonna spend that one hundred thirty-two percent three years down the road. But then, like, we gotta have these conversations of, okay, so what are you tired of doing? What do you like not like doing? Like I'm a cook. I prefer to cook all the time, but sometimes I run other business and other stuff too. 
I'm like, hey, you might have to go ahead and cook. Or we've ordered something. Right. Because we had that conversation before we came over here. I said, look, I know what you don't like to do. You know what I don't like to do. Are you sure you want to get married? <laughs> and that's how I went. Because I felt like being completely open and candid about the situation was important. Because I could have got myself in a situation like I was before, expecting something out of somebody that had no intentions on doing any of that. We are talking about willingness. Mm -hmm. Willingness is a... Is a High spiritual uh, it's, it's, willingness is a high spiritual energy. Yeah. And unwillingness is the lower lower side, yeah. right? So, um, and, and that's why, like, when people post on social media and I, and I chime in and stuff, it's because I'm hearing some unwillingness in their statement. So I'll I'll generally challenge that to see if there's a willingness if I can get the, them to speak from the willingness perspective. Is, 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 is what I do. So, um, um, okay, let me say that. We have a question back here. Yes, yes ma'am. I was going to say that out of my um, experience yes, in life, um, my mother taught me to be a woman that cook and clean and did all that. You know, that's it. Like they said, uh, Rachel Vance, uh, hard, 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 that you uh, align with. See, that's okay. agree. If the man doesn't cook, you can't beat the man to cook if he doesn't cook. Right. 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 So that's why we were talking about the beginning of the relationship. Like we were talking about, we go into, we start off not being genuine and not being honorable. And, and when, we're, when, we're, when we start to see one, when we start dating, dating process. we start the dating, the dating process. Time. I think we're genuine. We just don't get the time until we're so excited. And we I see think, something they like and we want to jump right into it. I think we think we're genuine. Right. 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 Exactly. I think, you know what I'm saying? That, that, yeah. and that's, that's, why, that's why it becomes challenging. Right. Because, because we think that we're doing the right thing. But what we're doing really is we're taking some information that somebody else gave us right. and trying to apply that information to our life. Right. right. And then we want the person that we choose to be with to do, to fit the part that that person said. Right. So, so we look at it and we say here on the show from some time to time, like, it's a script. Yeah. Women write the script right. and men play the part to get the job, <laughs> right? But what happens is oftentimes women, men don't even know they're auditioning for a role. Right. Right. They don't even know they got the job. They didn't read, they didn't read the script. They don't know their part. Yeah, they, they and then we're disappointed mm -hmm. because we have an expectation, mm -hmm. right, and that they are unaware of. Wow. Right. So now we. So now we end this. We got to be responsible for. We got to be accountable for the choice that we made. Right. And, if, and accept it. And then and then try to make whatever. Then make the necessary adjustments that we need to make when we realized it. Right. So it's like it's like wow. We we when we talk about things like uh, stability. Right. Stability is it's it's a term that sounds really good. Like you, when Eddie, you say ground, you want to see a man who's ground. So <clears throat> these are things that tend to be according to what the world says about what needs to be in a man in order for a woman to really want to attach herself to him, right? But we forget that we are always evolving, right? So just like when um, in a relationship, and I, this is a conversation I've had recently, so it's going to fit perfect. So I've got a young lady who has this expectation for a man to do and be whatever it is that she wants for him to be and do. And she wants him to be all the stuff that she wants, but she also wants him to attach himself to her, but, but give her time to, to, to do what she has to do. But she don't want him to, she, but in her, in her conversation, she's not saying, I will give him time. She's saying he needs to be what I need him to be so that I can take time to take care of me. But we're but the two of you are constantly evolving, yeah. right? Um, and I, I was saying to Keisha earlier, me and my wife can be in the same room. We can hear the same thing. I can get it and run with it and take off. 
she may not get it. Even though we were there, I'm like, yeah, remember we were there? Remember you heard the man who said this? But she didn't receive it the way I received it. Because right. even though we're there together, even though we're in a shared experience, we're sharing the experience differently. Yeah, or we're experiencing the experience differently. Right. So now, I can get it and run with it. She may not get it for five years. But she may get it in five years and then leap jump ahead of me ten years. Yeah. Right? So for me to have an expectation that she's supposed to get what I think she's supposed to get when she when I want her to get it. Wow. It's wild. Right? So to so we're talking about again freedom. Are we willing to give the person that we will the freedom that they need to have to evolve? Yes, ma'am. So I'm grateful for this forum. Thank you for it. Um, I think we have to have effective communication. Mm -hmm. That is so important. Because if we're not communicating and we're not opening our mouths, we're not going to get fed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether it's our mind, our body, or our spirit. Spirit mm -hmm. So for me, my experience is different. And I want to share this, that I believe it starts in the home. Okay? And then when we become parents, it changes. The responsibility changes. So as a father, right, because I'm bona based on my experience, so yes. I'm going to speak my truth. Yes. Um, that was absent for me. Okay? Did it change the dynamics of whom I'm supposed to be? I don't know. Did it change my outlook a little bit? Yes. Did it hinder on the trauma that I had? Yes. But we evolve. We change. We take time to get to know ourselves, right? That absent father, it made a difference in my life in the sense that um, I felt abandoned. I felt all these things. So I got to address those things before I bring it into a relationship with anybody. Right. A relationship with my sister, with my sister friends, whatever. Right. You can't have a healthy relationship with anybody if you're not healthy yourself. Right. Okay, so this man now, this father, comes back into my life later on. Right. So he has all of his trauma right. that he's been dealing with. And obviously he has trauma because he abandoned his child. Right. So he comes back into the relationship and he's got all his pucha, S-H-I-T, that he's dealing with. Right. He brings that to me and expects me to open arms, accept him. Right. Mm. right? When you haven't been there. Right. So now you want to tell me how I should run a relationship when you've given me no example of what that looks like. Right. And then you don't even want to address how to have a effective communication with your child. Right. And then I see you in broken relationships and I see the brokenness in you that you emulate in that relationship. Right. And now you're breaking that woman right. who's probably already broken because she's attracted to you. Right. So hurt people hurt people. So oh, it's, it's, a, it's a chain reaction. Right. So it needs to be addressed. Right. And I uh, just want to touch on masculine and feminine energy. Masculine and feminine energy is something that we're born with. It's in our DNA. So sometimes there are women who are a little bit more dominant than others. It doesn't mean they're trying to take a man's role because I tell you I don't. But I'm going to be who I am. And also I'm going to step up to the plate in the way that I need to to evolve in my life that's going to make my situations and my path easier for me. Right. I'm Coach Remedy and I'm <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I just want to get on one thing. Can I get on one thing more? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. What I don't understand it's really, really bothering me, and I see it in thousands of relationships. Let's say one or man, because they have some men that take care of their children. Yes. We don't talk about that because it's so few. But let's say the woman or the man is taking care of the child, and then the absent parent comes later. Right. Mm -hmm. The thing that I don't understand, I've been there doing it for eight, nine years, and you come in and you want to dog me instead of saying, hey, I'm so happy that you have done this job. Now I want to help you. Let me have some depression. Let me have some of it. Instead, they come at you like, you were 20, ah, you were 90, ah, oh, you have know, you know. yeah. This is your child, so I'll let you back in. Mm -hmm. You know, so that you can be a father. Well, I think that there should be programs to help the children, help the father, see, and okay. help the mothers to come back and be the father and the mother they need to be. I totally agree. That's one of the how we're raising our children. As, as I, I alluded to this earlier when I was talking, when we were talking about you having some kind of a challenge, and so I got a problem. 
Whatever that problem is, I got a problem. There's no way that I can parent my children without parenting my problem into my child. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? Then you can't do that. Right? So <clears throat> the key to that, excuse me, as I see it, is, and I'm going to borrow this from, I'm forgot this psychologist. Right. 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 There's no way that you can parent your child and not give them all of you. See, we, we tend to think that we're giving them the good part of us, but we're also giving them the bad and the ugly that's us also. So, uh, okay. Okay. So, so but give, give me on this. Give me on this. So, so what you do is the way to, to wait, the way to handle that, as I see it, is I transform. Right? I get better. And then in me getting better, I transmit my transformation to my children. Alan Berger, Dr. Alan Berger. Um, he was, he was, uh, he was, yeah, Dr. Dr. Alan Berger. I, I got access to him through the Zobot, um, Zobot Morning Show. So when, we, when people are asking how do you do it, the way you do it is you do it by you getting better. Right? Now, um, I got it from my grandmother. My grandmother shares a lot of stuff with me. I didn't realize how much she gave me, right? But I, she has she had a phrase, and I and I twisted the phrase around, and I say it this way: the journey is always in. Okay. Every answer to every question you have is already inside you. Yeah. You have to be willing to look in the mirror mm-hmm. and see the good, the bad. And the ugly that is you, that is you, love all of that while you work on that. That shadow, yeah, that shadow, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, um, we got we got way off from Eddie, your um, Eddie, 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 you know, that, that's a Tacora? Couture. Couture, yeah. Like Couture, but Couture. Couture. <laughs> yeah. I, believe, I believe these are all subjective questions because what's good to one might not be good go. to another. Mm-hmm. However, in my household, um, what I have been doing is allowing my daughters to fully express themselves, you know? So my five-year-old and my 12-year-old, they're going around saying words like struggling, frustrated, annoyed, confusing. You know, my daughter, she's only five, but she has a really big vocabulary, you know? And she was like, mom, I, I learned a word, satisfying. But it's a little confusing. Okay. What is that? That that I'm struggling, aren't I? I'm satisfied. Satisfied. What does that mean? And it's ongoing. I mean, she's just chatter, 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 chatter. And I have a 12 year old, and she's doing the exact same thing. And I let them. I never because I I grew up in a very traditional Haitian household, and children were silent. You do not look at the adult. In American culture, if you're not looking somebody directly in the eye, it's offensive. But in Haitian culture, if you're looking an adult directly in the, in the eye, yes. it's, it's offensive. So we are taught to stay in a child's place, don't ask too many questions, do what you're told. And so for me, being a mother, a single uh, mother, it's very important for me for my girls to learn how to express themselves so that when they get older and they get into a relationship, they know how to say, I don't like what you're doing. They know how to speak up. Right. Because when you're silenced, even when something is wrong, that's a trauma response. Mm-hmm. You're not silent, you've been silenced. Yeah. Right. Something happened in your past and it caused you to lose your voice. So in me knowing that and me being a mom, I now give my children the power to speak, whether I like it or not. I love that. I love that. I experienced that. I experienced that with my mother, right? I am my mother's caregiver, right? So every day, me and Mama gotta talk, 
<laughs> and um, one of the things I would teach parents when I was uh, in the school system, if you want your son to do something first, if you want your child to do something the first time, you tell them. Then only tell them one time. They'll get list. They'll get accustomed to listening to the first thing that you say, right? But what I also, but what I, and I, and I that came to me when I was watching um, uh, non-white women, single moms working with their boys. They would talk and they would keep talking and keep talking and keep talking. I'm like, so you don't talk five minutes and he could have been done with what you asked him to do if you just stop talking the first time you said, right? So. Right, so so right, so my I, so when my mom, when me and my mother are doing something, it could be something as simple as what she wants me to go to get her to eat. She's trying to kill me why she want to eat that. I really don't care. You want you want the real mom? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm eating. Right, 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 right. You want to eat? You know what I'm talking about? Chicken. No, 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 no. why you do it but I'm apologizing for whoever made it happen and I want to work with you on letting you know that when you speak I hear you because I think one of the reasons she struggles that one reason she keeps saying it over and over again is because she thinks she has to to be heard yeah so I asked her and she said yeah sometimes people don't listen I said okay well I heard you and then it actually became a thing because then I realized in the trying to get her to realize that I was listening to her, I was actually now interfering with her way of communicating. Um, so then I had to like back off on that. So now we're, so we're at the stage now where we're trying to find the balance mm -hmm. in that, in terms of her being able to say it. So, so. It's like you're taking a voice too. Right, right, right. And I'm like, and I didn't, and I didn't want that to happen. I'm actually trying to say that I, that you have a voice. And when you said it the first time, I heard you. And I, and I, and I thought that was a good thing, but in the process of doing it, I said, mom, I heard you. Now I'm cutting her off. Right, not allowing her to finish what she has to say. So now she's agitated and aggravated with me because I'm trying to let her know that I hear her. Yeah. Right. So, so, so you're, in a, you're in a transition period. Right, we're in a transition period now. We both we're both aware of it, yeah. and we're both working to not make that go back. Can I say something? Yes. So I was listening to her. Um, young lady right here with the um, yeah. Yeah. So I was listening to her. And I was listening to you, and I, I spoke to you guys. I heard, I heard y'all. Uh, and um, so I, of course, like I said, my kids are all the way grown, like grown, grown. <laughs> so, but I was a teen mother. So I was a seventeen-year-old mother. That's my son is thirty-three. So I was a seventeen-year-old mother. And what we have to understand is, I heard you. I'm going to put all y'all together in one walk. I heard you, I heard you, I heard you. <laughs> so, in, in, in your, you know, we, we think, when we think of culture, we think of, oh, they from Jamaica, they from Haiti, they from China. They, they, culture, is, culture is your home. And culture is how you do in your home. So whatever you do in your home is the culture you have just set up that person for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, when you get into a relationship, because we got to bring this back to relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you get into a relationship, what you, whatever you were raised, becomes the culture, and you, you want to put your culture off on someone who you done brought into your home or you done moved in home, whatever the case mm -hmm. is, y'all want to put your culture onto each other. Um, it's, it's, it's um, when you, when you. When you um when you do that, like for example, let me go back to to, to what I was saying with, with her. So I was a single mother, like I said, at seventeen I had my son. You know, when my son became an adult, not a teenager, but an adult, I had to apologize to my son, you know, because my son got a seventeen year old version of me 
and my daughter's got the 26 or something year old version of me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So they got two different versions. My son had to get babysit by the lady that, Lord Jesus, I can't get let her watch my child. <laughs> but I had to do what I had to do. You know what I'm trying to say? So she, so at different points in your life, everybody's going to get a different version of you. Um, so they, sometimes they don't be dads there. There was no dad there. I don't even know where no dad came from, not in my life or my children's life. But we here, we made it. So I, that part of his life, I owe him that apology. So that he could go on and be a great man for some woman. I didn't want him to be angry with me. And then when he go out to be somebody, I didn't want to, because a lot of, a lot of us now, we, 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 we push these men out here, and we done baby them, and we done, we done been their girlfriend instead of their mama. And so then you you lead them out there to some woman and you say, now go date. Doesn't nobody want that. Doesn't nobody want him. You know? Or he get taken advantage of. That too. You got two ways to go. You right. You got two ways to go. Go. How to move? You won't see it coming. Yeah, there you go. So with that being said, I had to. I owe my son that as a man, so that he would be a man to someone else. Do not judge. You know what I'm saying? Like. The things he might have missed with me, then he take that out on some woman, or or either, either way it goes, he's gonna take it out. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing when it comes to like she was saying, like her, you know, the, the father was absent. Okay, mine was too, and they come in your life, and they, you know, culturally he don't, don't know me, so I treat him as such. You don't know me. And we're going we gonna to start a relationship from here. So you, you, you know this girl. You don't right. know that girl. Right. Back there. So you want to take what I say at this age. Because right. you didn't you ain't get a chance to get to know me at the, the two-year-old age. Right. So you know, it is what it is, but you can't come in saying that. And then in, in relationship-wise, what I mean with the culture thing in our home, I remember when, my, when me and my husband first um, got together, moved in, wasn't married yet. I thought everything he did was, was, was wrong. <laughs> the way he folds the clothes. Oh. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being no, so no, 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 I, so I, everything, I, he, everything he did in the house, was wrong. I'm just showing you how you have the, that, that dominant thing can, it, and you think what you're doing is right and this is how it means it's right. So if he, if he went in there and he folded the clothes, I would go in there and I would not even knowing that I was unfolding them and refolding them the way I like them to fold. Right. <laughs> I, was, I was doing things that... <laughs> so listen, what my husband said to me to check me, remember I told you I had to learn to keep the business. So what my husband said to check me, he said, well, what makes you think the way you're doing it is right? Then I had to get quiet for a minute because the last man I had is so nail. <laughs> so I was like, hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So then I had to say, you know what? Well, my, you know, so now I don't care how you fold because I don't even want to do a lot of it. But I do it. I'm just saying. And what I'm saying is, what culturally you do in your home, that is, that is going to be your children's culture. You allow your baby to express it, it's going to be their culture the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. And so what's going to happen is when they go out in society and they meet people and they just be very expressive, Absolutely. you can't say, well, well the world's going to say our fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just express it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you're going to have to be able to say, you're going to have to be able to stand on that this is how we was raised in the house, so you're going to have to, this is what I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah. So I hope that gave y'all a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that just, you know, at, at, if you if you if you're a single mom and you have these babies young, you're gonna have to, you know, you might get married one day and have more. If you do whatever wherever you were at, that's what you're gonna have to apologize to your children at because my son got uh, one lifestyle of me. My daughter's got to live with amongst the light skinned people. <laughs> and I don't know if he was consciously saying it or was he trying to let me know. He's like, oh, y'all got it going on, but we had to live with that. That lady had rope shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's when I realized as a mother, I, I owe him an apology. I said, I'm so sorry. 
you know, your mama was fast. And I, and I was fast. <laughs> yeah, but I, but I still wanted, I wanted him to understand, and I say that because we're dealing with women, um, they're younger than me, of course, and I want to understand that in different areas of your life, you gonna always, like you said, you're always going to be healing, you're always going to be growing, and you're going to always be forever saying, I'm sorry. Yeah. But see, you know, so we talk about this a lot on the show, where, you know, DNA is a thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so who you are at 20 is not going to be who you are at 30. Yeah, so so, so, if you have, so if you have your first child at 20 and your last child at 30, it's, we, I, I, I think, right, that I, I think it's fair to say that the 30-year-old child, the child that you have at 30 is probably going to do much better. Yeah. 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 Right, because they got the they got they got that sure. they got a ten they got a ten year jump, yeah. right when they came into the world. So when they took their first breath, they were already ten years ahead of their other their sibling. So in turn, it's your, so that's why like in sports, mm -hmm. Michael Jordan's brother was a really good basketball player, but he was not as good as his baby brother. He was fine, not right, John Jones who just won the heavyweight title. John Jones just won the heavyweight title last night. Right, he got two older brothers. Right, and. They're very good athletes, but they ain't nothing like their baby brother, right? So DNA has some say so in that. So, but I, but but I think being being aware of it is is cool. Um, I did a lot of apologizing to my kids too, and still do. If I mess up, when I when I catch myself with something, I will call somebody. Yo, hey, baby, listen, daddy just realized something. Yeah, he was on some bullshit with this, and I and I, and I taught you this. And I'm telling you now, this bullshit. So don't do that to your baby. Right, uh, right. Or if, and if you want to do it, you know, you know, you're doing it. Right, right. And you don't have to. Don't, don't hit me. Don't come back with it. Well, you did it to us. We was growing up. Oh yeah, this, I haven't yeah, told you now. Yeah. So, so we, you know. That's but that's, that's, that's how, that's how part, far, how far the apology goes. Oh yeah. yeah. How yeah, far? Yeah. Just listen. Some, some of the stuff we just don't have information. Exactly. Yeah. But just you know what. But I was stupid, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is my mom here. So, what you said to me resonated with me because my mom had my brother. I'm, I'm her baby girl. She had my brother 19 years after she had mine. Okay. So, the dynamics of the way she raised him is very different than the way she raised me and my sister. Right. So, I want to apologize to you now because you were a teen mom. And I want to say that. Um, we gave you flack because of the way you raised me, my brother. But the dynamics twisted because um, we had predators that came in our lives mm -hmm. that caused tr a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. So there was a mother who was 16 and 17 who had two girls that she was trying to protect. So it was flipped. Mm -hmm. So the strength that me and my sister have is very different. Because we saw the strength she had mm -hmm. at that age trying to be that mother who was surviving. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we gained from her. Mm -hmm. And now for my brother, I feel like she coddled him because her girls were hurt and she wanted to protect him. Yeah. So it was flipped. Yeah. 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 And so I want to say I recognize that strength in you and that strength in you is in me. What makes me the woman that I am today so that I can give my brother that love to help him be a better man. Oh, Can I get away from that mirror? So thank you for that. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, ma'am. I say this because I know that five of my relationships, um, I went through to the same thing. I didn't understand. Is it me? I like to know if somebody gave me that answer. Or is it the gentleman that I'm with? It's, now, it's, it's, when I know this, this one's like what it is. When I know this, like, if I join something wrong, this is my phone right here. The microphone. Oh, my, 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 my. If I'm doing something wrong or different, what I know this is like, if, let's say, okay, let's say uh, I'm going out with my guy and he says, well, baby, be dressed or meet me at this place, blah, 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 blah. And when I get there, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm looking wrong. Right. But he's thinking something else. Right. So he lets his power, right? Instead of just saying, well, honey, why don't you put on so and so and so? Now, when we start communication, right? If I say I'm sorry that I did something, yeah, I know you're sorry, because you should have did it from the beginning. Yeah, what did you think? I told you so and so. And they go on the and part. on right. and on. What that makes me want to do is <clears throat> smack with the hell out of me. 
And you said, no, dude, I'm going to let you smack that shit. But you said, no, you smack that shit. That's what I'm going to tell you. 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 That's, that's why. why. That's why. Yeah, 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 that was, I was, I was yeah, saying, it's not about law. Yeah, 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 it's not about law. If you correct yourself, then maybe you'll like attract people who are like how you are. My God, we don't need to hear that shit. Because this is a person yes. reflecting your inner dialogue, wow. your, 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 your negative inner dialogue towards every move you make, nitpicking yourself. Yeah. So now no, I'm going to pick everything, but I do need to pick something. But, 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 but that's, 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 that's why he's there. He's there to show you that part of you. Yeah. That's something that you need to correct. And when you correct, and when you correct, and you stop nitpicking yourself, then you make room for people who will be different. Your problem is you don't even have a tolerance. You won't even because when you as soon as you tell me a man talking to you like that about that, it's like red flag, like. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, 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 do not pass over. Now, the bad part about it is that I haven't had a man for seven years, I don't want to Because I. Oh, you don't want to go out. 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 You don't I'm scared of the guy, and uh, so mm, I was, you know, when you growing up, and as a woman back in the day, you don't pick the guy; the guy picks you, right? right? And you pick so, that, right? And then you, you choose, the right? You choose, choose to go along with it, right? But most of the time, it's not the guy I want. <laughs> I want the other one. So, like you said, <laughs> you gotta sleep with him. Tell him that. And that's what you gotta tell him. You ain't gonna show me the same thing. Wait, who about the wait? I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I promise you. I promise you. No, I promise you. It's okay to say. Wait. I want to talk with him. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about what you don't want. And that is tradition. That is tradition. Hey, listen, my you're moving on tradition. Right. You're moving on tradition. No, that's tradition that a man chooses you. You know, but there's no biblical that the man chooses you. No, I'm saying, God is a choice. God is a choice. He finds a wife, but you still get a choice in the matter if you want to date him. No, no, you don't get a choice. You do get a choice. You know what I'm saying? 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 I ain't been there. I told my husband, I told my husband, hey, what's up with you? He knows me. He knows me. He know my mouth. Yeah, we're we didn't say I didn't think you were going to go. I learned a woman's going to choose. Like, we can be all together. He's my friend. We can be all together. And we may have an eye on that same woman. But guess what? If she come up and he might go talk to her, she say no. Nah. He go talk to her, she say no. Nah. I go talk to her, she say yes. Guess who just signed up? See, I don't 
Yes. Okay, okay. The thing is, the thing is, like moving past that fear, recognizing that that fear is within you because of your past, so then you can begin to address and embrace that so you can move past that, and then you will reach a space to where you're open. For somebody actually coming in and loving you mm. the way that you would like to give love and receive you. Mic drop. Mm. Right? Drop the mic. It's like if you got a girl when you're picking that game. I don't want to break the mic. Like, like, you know you got a girl. <laughs> go on and pull it and see what happens. <laughs> okay. Um, you need to reach your breakout point. You know what to expect. So next question. Yeah. Next question. Don't go to the next Okay, this one right here. I got some brothers. Wait, let's, let's go with this. One. So, what do you say to black men who say that black women are demanding that black men be more super than Superman? Why the same celebrating women in mediocrity and encouraging them to be less like so less than so what do you say to black men who say that black women are demanding? Yeah, what do you say to yeah, what do you say to black men who say that black women are demanding that the that, that black men that we be super that we be more super than Superman? Women, black women are saying we need y'all to be more super than Superman while at the same time celebrating mediocrity Medi among women. Like, girl, don't worry about him. You just be who you are. Well, Instead of encouraging her to be her best self, it's, it's like, it's like, you understand? You know it's, like, it's this thing out here, right? So, right, so, and, and, I, and I had Lizzo down as an example because, um, because when I look at Lizzo, she seems like she might be overweight. No, right? <laughs> but but the but the what the world is saying but the world is saying she fat. Right. So why is that why Lizzo when when I've watched women in conversation and I've watched women speak highly of her mm -hmm. for being who she is in that moment and, and ignoring what a what her health is yes. or, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So why why does the man that black men be more super than Superman? But you don't have that same energy towards black women. Well, one because we didn't have super, we didn't have super or Superman at the house. <laughs> so when we find one, we like Lord, I'm ready. We want to be Clark Kent, go in there, <laughs> change the clothes, come out, and get all in there. <laughs> 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 Got a question. So when, so when you got this idea about Superman, have you ever seen one like that? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. My mom came in and cleaned up. I think that whole concept is so because you are. A lot of women, and I, and I see it, uh, but men just have to go in places within the community where they're celebrated and not tolerated. Right. Yeah. Because that, that community of women that want a black man to be more super than Superman, that population of women does exist. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's unrealistic to think of anyone that way. Yeah. Um, when you look at a black man and you want the black man to have this, have that, you are dehumanizing him because mm -hmm. you're not giving him any room for error. That's a human being. Mm -hmm. Human beings make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so when you hold him to this, you know, you put on, you have your expectations all the way up here, you dehumanize him because he's a human being. Mm -hmm. Nobody's yeah. up here. Right. We are mm -hmm. all we we're, we're none of us are void of error. Come on, all make mistakes. We all fall into error. You know. So <laughs> men have to know that those women are either delusional or the trauma is so deep that they actually believe that that's a reality. 
They have to stay away from women like that because you're only being tolerated for what you can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. You have to go away. So get white women. Gonna say to you, but I he said it for me when we were talking <laughs> yeah, before yeah, the show, right. and I, I went along the line. I'm like, you know, I feel like I was saying that I can't be respecting black women, but right. that wasn't the case. It's because that percentage of women that they have a silver man, it's yeah, it's very smaller. But then I felt like there was no no effective communicating between the two of them. So then I'm like, oh, he goes off and he finds a white woman. Because she was taught all these things. Right. And I've come across some black men where they say these things. They're right. like, oh, well, oh, yeah. the black woman, she too the end, blah, 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 blah. But then if you have this white female who was taught all these things, she um, understands, honestly, she probably didn't grow up in trauma. And if she did, it was addressed it. Because mm -hmm. they believe in therapy, therapy right. mental therapy. Right. right, and so, um, yeah, I'm just glad you said that. Yeah. Well, I, was, I, was, I was joking, by the way. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to report all these four go away. All these four go away. Going back to the question, because I know I said I got a superman, and I do buy a superman. Mm -hmm. I, you might not be they nobody else for it. But what I'm saying is, the best of their, the wrong what, what you were saying, like, with, with, you know, teasing off of him with the white woman. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, I had nephews and, that went off to college and. and, and Ran through a few. But they <laughs> did. But the Same thing. 
Okay. Same so thing. Yeah. Same thing. Very much. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, when she took that stuff back, and hopefully she had a talk with him because a lot of us took off the material stuff instead of the mindset. Yeah. When we have our mindset right, that's what makes the difference. You have all the money in the world. Right. That's what I
it was a young black dude. He was like a highly recruited person. He was coming to this school. And when he got there, it was like all these young college girls like waiting like to welcome him to the school. And it was like none of them was black, bro. None of them was black. That's and like, it was like, like it was like, y'all better pay attention to what's going on. Y'all don't know his brothers just got to go to this school, but they do. They do. They do. That's what you. That's right. There was so many of them. They were white and Latino, bro. So to answer the question, I believe that um, women have um, this vision of what they need Superman to look like. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, because they've never had that Superman. Those men have not showed up in their life. Mm -hmm. The uncles haven't showed up. The it's grandfathers, right. the fathers, they have not showed up. So they're holding on to hope. So when they get that Superman, mm -hmm. they are diving in because their heart has longed for so long to have that, that they just become toxic, oftentimes. Um, We've had we passed this question and you said it so you kind of brought it back up. So the phrase I had was it was not mine. Um don't date no, don't date your idea. Right. Date the man. Right. So when you when you hear that, what what resonates with you? Don't date your idea, date the man. So, right, right, right. You know, it's, 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 therapy. Right, because right, 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 most, most, most people have an idea of right. who they're going to marry when they're like ten. Right, right. right. You, you, you start to formulate what your husband or what your wife right. is going to look like before you even met them. Right, and then, and then, right, and then, and then, then you hold it. Then you want to hold them to that standard. When you meet somebody, you had an idea what your mind, what your what your yeah. husband and wife is gonna look like when you're 12 years old, mm -hmm. right? And you know, take this idea, this whole persona, what kind of house you're gonna live in, how many pets you're gonna have, how many children you're gonna have, how many, well, how many gonna be a boy, how many, you know, after all this out, then you meet someone and you marry them and you want them to be your idea. <laughs> right? It, which is probably I mean, why the, the divorce rate is so crazy high. <laughs> Why would you say the divorce rate is higher than that? To me, my idea was secretary. Hey, man, you know? That's not a very good job. You guys might have taken it. You guys might have taken it. Don't let go of me. You can marry him. You can marry him. You can marry him. You said your ideal mate a woman was a secretary. So you have sex with your secretary? No, 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 has been more like my study team, my reflection. I'm in the business. She got to be business minded as well. I can't deal with nobody down that level of business minded. We need to grow. I'm going to you an ice cream shop. If you want to mop floors, poop, scoop, whatever, I got to invest into you not only financially into your hair and nails, but to your career path. You got to match me. I can't be doing this and you doing that. You never work. work. No, I'm a whore. Oh, no, 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 no. Only can be done Man, you, you can tell a woman, hey, I just want to. I don't know if it's 
That's not you. I'm not. I'm not. But listen, I'm not going to blow a lot of people's spots up. But a lot of people you can make But hold on. I got. See, there's a lot of females, right? There's a lot of females that even comment on your page, right? That came to the barbershop. I ain't blowing people's names up. But if you see my DMs. And they know I'm a whore. They don't care. Blow it up. Nah, they don't care. I'm telling you. They don't care. They don't care. I'm telling you. They don't care. Right. Oh. Okay, so listen. Because you attract what you want. Just like you said. Be Now you're getting it. Be bold. 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 Be no, I'm not. Allegedly, allegedly. We don't. Allegedly, we don't. Let's get back to relationship. This is getting out of hand. <laughs> now, I'm not saying I'm going to change the right individual. I will. But again, you got to be right first. You got to be right Yes. Yes. I'm good. Yes, yeah, I'm gonna be trained. I said the whole time you're trying to be her partner, she wants you to be the dad that she never had, right. and you can't compete with that. She wants you to always be on point, always be gentle, always be getting the money, always be having time, always. Jenna, just everything. When she goes crazy, you get more calm. Baby, look, I get it. Right now, you, you're going crazy. Listen, look at me. You know what I'm saying? She wants you to see, it's like, this your daddy. That's, that's what your daddy, because when you're a little girl, your daddy, he take you off for ice cream. He buy all your clothes. He take you everywhere you need to go. Wait, 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 wait. No, I'm just saying. But this is what I'm saying. I'm saying you're, it's, it's men out here that's trying to be a partner with a woman. But she wants you to be the dad she never had. She, like you said, the Superman, the superhero. And now you ain't adding up because you are flawed. And you do have things you need to work on. And you got your own trauma. And she like, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, this ain't going to work. We can work and we work together. So that's a relationship that where they're probably not meant to be together. Right. How long are you going to stay there and live there? No, I'm just saying, but that's a that's a that's a real thing. Of course, you know, you get up out of there, you know what I'm saying? But that's a real thing. And I think the more we become aware of these things, then we can embrace that reality and yeah. pass it. You know what I'm saying? Just you have to become aware of something yeah, first. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Problem to a person if the person doesn't think a problem is correct. Right. Yes. I think. That we get what a relationship is wrong. We, our idea of what a relationship, as I see it, is the person that you're with, they're there for you to see yourself so that you can work on the things you need to work on. So you're going to, you're going to, you're going to see your reflection, you're going to see the good, you're going to see the bad you, and you're going to see the ugly you. That's the purpose of the relationship, the love and all the other stuff. That's not that's not the purpose of the relationship. That's the stuff that kind of comes with it. That's, the, that's how we kind of model it. That's how we set it up. But the reason you're with whoever it is you're with is so that you can see you, so that you can do the work that you need to do to be a better ver to grow into the better version of yourself. Evolutionary. The mirror. Right. So there's no so people like to say, what if you get the wrong man? Ain't no wrong man. <laughs> Ain't no wrong woman. That person was there to show you what you needed to see so that you can deal with it. Now, if you get rid of them and don't deal with that, you're going to have, you're going to repeat that with the next person. Right? I'm a healer, but I'm a healer. I attract. Oh, no. That was a joke. I think there's a two part of my So, there are people who are attracted to that type of person, who wants that type of person, to give them the thing that you feel that they're seeking because their father hasn't given to them. What if they just are that person that wants those things? So then they should find that person who resonates with their spirit, who wants to give them those things. Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't always mean. It doesn't always mean. No, 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 no,
So you don't have to look for it. You don't have to rock at it. You have to make songs about being a real ass bitch. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to do that. You don't have to. You don't have to write dissertations about what a real man is because the man that you believe in, a real man, will be sitting right there in front of you, pulling your nails and buying your hair, doing right. whatever you think That's that right. a man is supposed right. to do. But, every, but, every, but everything. Every, well, I said that just when I hear y'all say that. But, no, but, I don't know. All okay. she needs is sponsors. What, what I'm saying is, what she said about she money? Did. He takes your hair. What I you said about hair? hair? I said, I hope, and, and I know I'm, I'm a little out of the loop with the next to this, this generation, but um, <laughs> under me. But when I hear y'all age group, my son, we like. I don't know about these players right here too, because he's going at this hey, point. He's running for office. <laughs> <you're going. laughs> <laughs> 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 I didn't say that. I didn't say it. I said him, not you. What I said was, I, it bothers me, and I, I, it bothers me to hear that y'all young men, not you. Y'all young men saying that women looking for you guys to pay for hair and nails and insufficient things that they should be able to pay for for themselves. Because it leaves a bad taste in me and mouth when you, this girl is looking for some form of, like you said, sponsorship. Those are things that she should go to work and take care of herself. And so when, when, I, when I hear men say, um, oh, I just get this girl money, get her hair done, get this girl. Yeah, yeah. Common, I, that, I think it. I think that's what like yeah, yeah, you know, you know, so you know, Right, but then there's a lack somewhere with, within herself that she feels that she has to pursue a guy so he can take care of her basic necessities. Yeah. So at this point, yeah. those are the bitter. Who in trouble? Right, right, right. That's, 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 that's what we're saying. The whole point is, if, if that's there's nothing wrong with whatever you whatever you truly desire. That's that's what you that you gonna get whatever your you you making space for in your life. So 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 if you're looking for a man to take care of you, you gonna find a man to take care of you, but it might not come with the very choice oh, you think it comes with. You right. That's so one so like so like you gonna get what if, if you want something superficial, it's gonna be superficial. The problem is when you get superficial, you start to look underneath and you say, oh, this wasn't that original paint or this wasn't that original house. This wasn't that original car. It just looked good. Right. So so if you don't have a real foundation of what you actually want. Then you're gonna get exactly what you think you want, and then you're gonna realize you don't want it. Mm. Now you're stuck there. Realize you don't even really know yeah. what you want. Right, so that, that's yeah. that's why that's why you're gonna get the mirror. You can't run from it. You can't I say escape that it. Because I, I'm, you know, I say all that to say, as a, you know, in my younger days, I thought that that's because that was the circle of people I was around, that that's the type of being I had to be with. You mm. had things. You see what I'm saying? Right. And came that, came a whole lot of hell and a whole lot of food. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I want the next generation of women that come behind me not to think that that's what they have to do in order to get a man or, or you know, um, yeah, that's real. Yeah, yeah, be amongst. You know, you understand what I'm trying to I say? Be amongst I, that. I, I, if, if, my concern is that it's got that it looks like it looks like it's getting worse, right? Mm -hmm. So right now, in terms of relationship conversation, we're having conversations where we're actually putting more and more reasons on the table not to be together mm -hmm. than we are to be together, mm -hmm. right? So I, I post, and, I, and I, every month I post, can we normalize not throwing people away? Oh, yeah. Can we normalize not throwing people away? Because most people will tell you that this is this and this happened, you need to get rid of that person, or that, that, that's you, you need to get out of that circle. And this way, I get it, right? It's not that I don't get it, right? It's like, you don't want to be the, 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 I guess the idea is, if you're a good person and you're trying to do what you're trying to do and you're trying to build whatever it is you're trying to do, you shouldn't be around people that are not on that same page because they can stop you from doing what you need to do. But the, but, but the flip side of that is, maybe you're supposed to be there for them to attest themselves to you in terms of what, in terms of them being more like you. Right. So if, if, if all the good people are going to move out of the town Get college education, never come home. What does the community look like? Right? What does the community look like? And then people talk about the community, but what happened was, and, and this is what we do, we listen to what we're, what we're being asked to do. We will pack up and leave. 
and leave the community and say, I'm going to say, Gan, I'm glad I got out of there. Wait a minute. If, you, if all of y'all who left and came back, what could what the community what would the community do look, look like? And the thing is, we gave that was the message. We threw people away, and now the community suffers because our talented are gone. Supporting another community. Yes, yes, ma'am. You, you, you got to you got to speak a little louder or get on the mic. You got to come up to the mic. You only just turn around. I'm at the mic. Okay, and speak and speak into it. Throwing people away. Throwing people away. Throwing people away. Okay. Um, in regards to someone who mistreats you or does you wrong, and you decide you don't want to be around that person, that person, or in that group of people, how do you handle that? I'm not telling anybody to be in any situation where they're being abused. That's not. That's not what. That's what I'm saying. That okay. 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 They may do you wrong some kind of way, but not necessarily abuse. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what are you talking about not going away? I'm I, saying. I, I, have a, I have a recent example that I was talking to someone who was in a talking stage. And through talking, I realized that this man had a lot going on and he still had a few demons to fight. And instead of throwing him away, I put him in friend zone. I can't be your girlfriend I do right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't be your girlfriend right now. But what I can do is be a good friend and support you. You can call me when you need to vent, and we can talk it out. I'm not going to throw you away because I, I believe he's a good man. But right now, I work. As a substitute teacher, three days a week. Then I enter two days a week. Then I got my master's home. Then I got my two kids. You coming in with all of your shit is not going to work for me mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. I can't partner with you right now. You got too much shit going on for me because I, I got a lot. I can't add you onto my plate. But here's what I can do I can be a really good friend and I can listen. I want those things. So what's the difference in that and being yeah. like, yeah. like yeah. if he bit you and all of that? I'm standing right here and I didn't hear your question. <laughs> what's the difference in like being his friend, listening to him bit, and being with him? Like, where what is the separation? Because you're saying you can't be his partner, but you can be a friend. Sometimes. Uh, it, there's, sex. There's, there's, sex. That's, that's it's a lot of like sex, but I mean, like, yeah. we, we're not making any future plans. We're not having any sex. We're not putting our money together to get a house. Do you not? You don't believe in platonic attraction? I'm asking you what the difference was. This is not about what I believe. There's, in, not there's the romanticism because if I'm if I got like. Uh, I'm working on a master's and I got my kids and all that. I really don't even want to hear you bang either because I don't have a well, romance. Well, I, 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 I was going to ask that. I was, uh, I was going to, I seriously was going to ask that. What she's asking, what I was, in my mind, when I was listening to you, I was thinking to myself, what would I want to hear? Like, I don't want to hear nothing. Like, you know, I'm going to take care of myself. 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 i am going to Sure. He has no, no, no. You say he has a lot going on, and oh, a lot of demons, right? And so, a few. well, that's a lot to me. <laughs> more than two is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, you have to decide what's enough for you. Right. Sometimes we, you know, we want to want to be there for people, mm -hmm. and it, it becomes draining. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it becomes it becomes so draining that it will do it. Now if you don't have memories. Away, it takes away the energy that you well, have. Here's the thing. My master's degree is actually in clinical social. So I'm learning how to professionally care about people's problems. Oh, okay, so you are yeah, it's just professional. <laughs> and so for somebody so so for somebody to like vent on me. Right, that's why I was going like, to me, he's going to be a project after a while. Well, I, I'm not going to take all his problems because I don't solve anybody's problems. I just became another safe space for a black man. Shout out and to that's you. All I did. Well, that's just what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 At first, you were saying, oh, it looks for a Superman person, right? And and that's well, how you Hold on. <laughs> oh, I'm Jeffy Superman. Now, I'm, I'm Jeffy Superman. Sure. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, you don't know, but I'm, I'm a little joke. I'm a little joke. <laughs> but, but, yeah, like, <laughs> but, but, yeah, but, like, but, but, no, no. That was his crush, but, no, 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 no,
Me, me personally, if I met a woman, 10 kids in the shelves or whatever, but she was dope, I'll give her an opportunity to work with her. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pour it to the side because I'm mad enough to not control mine and do mine and still help her out. You if, have you the get, capacity. You know, if you if you but the thing is it's like you don't want a superman with a person, right? But then a young man who might you could have been an outlet to change his life. It happens. People change people's lives. I don't have the capacity. You don't want to do it. She a she a woman. You don't want to do it. 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 So okay. What you want? She decided she was damn to obligated to no. that walk. Yes, she did. Yes, okay, but, but so, so, so if a man goes to a woman that got kids, but if she got kids, like that, he gonna take her, he gonna take her. But it's different. Okay, what's the man attaches to woman attaches Okay, so okay, so say if I got with her, right, and she's in the school or like that. No, she, she, no, 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 no. I'm gonna make sure that her studies is met. I'm gonna help her out, get to the next level. That's the obligation, right? We going to her life. Those are things I'm ready to take on on birth. So we should communicate and give her opportunity and say, "Hey, are you? Can you handle this? So what can I do?" Challenge the energy. You going? She going to school for it. She going to school for it. If you strong enough, you can handle it. I think that's fair. You got a <laughs> Mom, be discriminating now. Oh, okay. She's discriminating. Okay, Jason. Oh, no, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. I was saying, like, wait, um, the w women, the way they take on being in a relationship with us is totally different from the way we take on being in a relationship with them. Right. Yeah. You know, because there was a time I was dating this woman, but I had a lot going on, and I was like putting the pieces of my life back together. Right. And she had her kids and her, she's an entrepreneur working for herself and her own things at the same time. Right. And she was like, she was like, I just like, we, we need some space because she was like, every day I wake up, I'm trying to figure out how I can like assist you and, and get in and get in where you need to be and do 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 do. And when I, I know it's not my job and certain things I know I can't do. And it's just so it's taking such of a toll on me. Like it's not on you, but like, we need to do like really like back off of each other like from the capacity that we were dealing with each other and i understood that because she's like when once i choose to love you in that way like i'm i'm i'm, I'm in there with you and you got stuff going on that i can't do nothing about but i'm like i can't not focus on it because it's you and it's everything that comes with you right so for a boundary for her and she realized it was throwing her yeah more so, I'm right. So she came to me and like let me notice, like tears in her eyes. I wasn't upset at all. Like I was no, yeah. no. I felt the way. Let me not. Let me not say that. Let me not say that. Let me not say that. Now at first I did feel the way because I felt like it's like it's responsibility. Like I'm like I'm actively putting the pieces of my life together. together on my own. Right. Yeah. But she's like it's just the way that I'm wired. Yeah. Right. And so. I felt the way, but I had to respect that. You know what right. I'm saying? Me and her, we cool to this day. Right. And I realized, like, the way women, the way they take us on is different from, yeah. like, hope you can still stay logical and handle what you can for her, what you can, but you still got everything on your plate. But once she made your, your plate, our plate, yeah. it's, it's, it's oh. full overwhelming. No, <laughs> well, our, our emotions don't overwhelm us like women's emotions overwhelm us. <laughs> we, we, I don't want that. I, I'm glad to be a man. Y'all can have it. That's, that's, what, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing about y'all complimenting us because the way y'all feel things is, I think it's just on a way whole other level from us. But I, but I get it, and shout out to you for creating space, and this is why a lot of black men don't vent because a lot of women do make you feel like when, like when you. See this little quote come healed. Of course, that's garbage, right? Yeah. Nobody believes that, but 
people will say that. Yeah. And you're like, what are you talking about? You're so you're you're pristine, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of black men are just like, you know what, I'm straight. I'm even trying to say anything to you about what I got going on. But you can look at me like I got flaws and I'm weak and now you I don't fit your idea and now you dehumanizing me. So you know what? I'm gonna just go ahead and carry away on my shoulders like Atlas until I figure it out. Is that or you feel like like uh it'll be used as ammo later? That so too, recognize like my safe. vulnerability. Yeah, it's like it's That's not safe. safe. So like most men are not gonna vent to no woman. I am. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I get to, if I gotta take care of you, you gotta take care oh, of me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're safe though. We're, we're, we're getting close to rounding down, so I wanna I wanna I wanna put this last question to the ladies. Um do you think in general, in general, generally thinking, do you think that black Black women think highly of black men. I do. Yeah. So in general, not that, not you personally. Oh, uh, unfortunately, not I. <laughs> not you personally. Uh, I made a post Black History Month two days before. Mm -hmm. Who was it? I forget the actual day, but I know it was last month, Black History Month, mm -hmm. and I said something about specific. Specifically, only dating black men, and so many women came for my neck. I saw that. You saw that? I, saw that. I was getting dragged, <laughs> being a black woman, loving on black men in Black History Month, and I was like, "Wow!" It felt like Twilight Zone. Like, what is? What? I absolutely okay. adore. So we talking about? Why am I blocked? Okay, two different ages. Oh. So when she would say, yes, you know, I think highly of black men, you just go to my age above. You know, the 50 and 60 old, and no, they don't say high level because they don't nothing behind it for damn long. Wow, and, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> 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 they said, do you think highly in general? She's not talking yeah. about this. She said, yeah. the general question, not not me, what I think of black like me. I'm saying just the conversation that I have had sitting with women, women sitting in my chair, women in groups and talking. No, they don't do anything highly of black men because black men, if you talk about my age, I'm not talking about the 30 year olds, I can't talk to them, I can talk to 50. Yo. No, they don't because they have um, left them. They have um, left them that have raised children on their own. They have mm -hmm. um, demonized them. They have said all kinds of things. They have allowed so much to happen to them that no, they don't think highly of them. They don't have hope in them. You know what I'm saying? They don't have hope. They don't know where they have to put their hope in because they don't have it in that in that brother anymore because of of his circumstances and what he has done. So I can understand why they shouldn't have drugged you, but I can understand why if they, those women did because you're basing it off of their experience mm. with a black man. Mm. And so that's why, you know, I'm going to stick with my brothers, but I understand why some of them are going to hold I definitely understood. Yeah. You like, know, so but it, it, it was just an overwhelming so, so, so to answer that question, no, not all, all black women don't. I got a question. Go ahead. Okay. So no, I was just agreeing with what you were saying because um, when I think back, my granddad was a rolling stone. He had a whole nother yeah. family. He had a whole nother family. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, um, he had a whole nother family while being married to my grandma. And then my, my mother, she's like the youngest of 12 kids. Now, in their household, my granddad, my, my grandma, um, you know, where my mom grew up in, there's only five of them. But he has a total of 12 kids. And there you go. So when my grandmother passed away, she said it wasn't the leukemia that killed her. It, she died from a broken heart. Mm -hmm. That is stung me. Right. And I was like, well, that's no, real. It's real. I was like, that is that penetrated in me. So then that's where, like I was saying at the beginning, like, he, we never, we do heal, like, we progress. Some of us don't heal. Because my grandmother stayed married to my grandfather until he died. She hated him. Well, that's she that's hated him. Yeah. And she did things in the home, and we saw her do things in the home. She 
We stay because of children. Religion. We stay because of religion. We stay right. when we should have been left. Mm. But we stay. And so then you ask us, do we think highly of black men? A lot of them don't. Your grandmama probably didn't even like your granddaddy, but she stayed yeah. because she wanted to keep that faith. Exactly. 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 I'm, 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 I'm just saying. That's I'm why they sleep in separate rooms. You don't know quite as why they sleep in separate rooms. They just don't move back. So for your age group, like 50 and up, so like, who do you think they like reverence or like admire or like hold with prestige? Um, this going to sound crazy when I, I hate to say that. Oh, God, I hate to say that. But my age group, who they hold with prestige is that old cheap pastor. But that's <laughs> <laughs>
statistically speaking, the numbers say that 51% of men are um, single and childless. This is lit. I think it's 50, between 51 and 54 percent of men are, 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 are single and childless. Is that all men across the board, every nationality? Yes. Okay, so, no, check, so check this out. So check this out now. Now, right around 30 percent of men are married with children. So that leaves 20 percent of men who are not married. And got a bunch of baby moms. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now, when you got, when you got twenty percent of men who sleep with all these women, it looks like all men are bad, but it's just twenty percent. Wow! It's just it's, it's it's really just twenty percent. So what we so what we're doing is we're we're making this we're making this decision based on our own. Personal experience, which which, which 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 is what you're going to do, but the reality is, it's not true. The reality is, eighty percent of men out there doing very well, and they're not out here dogging out women. It's just that. Amen. Let's, 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 let's be real. Y'all like the same dudes. Yeah. Who are the same dudes? Listen to this. Statistically speaking, 80% of the women are sleeping with 20% of the men. Ooh, and have their babies by it. Right? 80% of the women are sleeping with 20% of the men and have their babies by it. So it makes sense that these dudes ain't sticking around, but they gotta run. They got still here. Right? Right? So but but there's a large population of men. Who get classified and linked in with the twenty percent, and that's not that's not fair to them. Because 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 what happens is women treat that those men who are in that eighty percent like they're that twenty percent. Mm -hmm. Well, they just run from right? it because they got too much trauma. Right. Girl. So they then, don't and, and, then and, what, and what and what ends up happening is it hurts her. Mm -hmm. It ultimately hurts her. So we're talking about what women want. They don't know. We want. We want I, 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 what I'm hearing is, what I'm hearing is, because we're wrapping up, what I'm hearing is women want to be happy. Uh -huh. They want to be with someone when they know that they're in a safe place. Mm -hmm. They want to be aware of who they are, and as my sister said, and who they are, so that they can. Work to be their whole self while loving and being loved with someone where they, where the mirror takes place, where you know he's there and she's there and they're there for each other, um, without unrealistic expectations. Am I getting it right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In theory, in theory. Well, well, you got Jason and another young man who tried to do that with a woman, and she blocked both of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, I want to say. I want to say. Yeah. 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 Get them, you know, get them cheeks. I'm 15, 16 years old. My dad, my uncles, all the guys in the hood. You ain't having sex yet? You're supposed to be smashing everybody. All your know. sister friends, all my 12. <laughs> <laughs> and that's every day. Every day, every day, you get raised and taught by this, you know, by the So you grow up, and you, that's the way to be. That's what you're supposed to do. That's the way you're supposed to be. Then you realize you've been misled. Some, some realize that and a lot don't. So that probably go into those percentages, especially it, it, with black men. It, it, is, it is a thing that, that, that doesn't get said a lot. Um, when, a guy, when a guy is in that space, he really feels like he winning. Right. It's hard to get a man to not want to win. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not. You know what he no, you, 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 you,
People look at me and think I'm happy, but really, truly, I'm not. You know why I'm not? Why are you doing it? Hold on, I'm tight. You got to be qualified. <laughs> you got to be qualified in this level. But the thing is, people think I'm happy, but really, for real, for real, when I go book my flights, my international passports, I'm going by myself. So you're really not really truly happy. It may appear that because I'm doing, right. but internally, you want them pictures. You want the memories. You want that. Yourself like that is what it is. Sometimes it's good, but overall, I don't know. But you don't pay. I'm very happy. 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 i Women think highly of black men. Yes. Amen. So I want to say that I started out in my life not thinking highly of black men because I didn't have an example of what a good black man looked like or what a we black man that I should look up to look like. Yeah. With the exception of my grandfather, who's Latino, I had him as an example. But in terms of what evolved around me, I didn't have that. My perception changed when I began to heal and I began to realize that these black men that I'm raising, my nephews, my brothers, that I needed to be an example for them so that they can see how to attract healthy women and have healthy relationships. I needed to be the example because the men in my family weren't doing it. They weren't and aren't teaching these black men how to be black men. So they don't know how. So with forums like this and having healthy black men in the community, teaching them who's supporting us black women, giving us different visuals of what a black man is will help to change our perception of how we feel about black men and how we respect them and what level we place them on. I'm on Facebook. This is Eddie and Patricia. Oh, that's you? Oh, yeah, you were the blocker. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 listen. I'm not too Don't worry about it. I mean, don't worry about it. I'm not blocked, right? That's what Eddie, I'm doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, my Instagram is Yokeach Six, and then um, the um, nonprofit is Hercules Society 5123, and then there's a Hercules Society podcast. And what's that? What's that? Hercules? H E R H E R H E L S, and then Society, and then podcast, and then same Hercules Society, but then 5123. Alright. And to my wonderful co-host, Miss Contora Gammon. She is the bully owner. A new hair. And, uh, um, I want to thank you ladies for joining us. Um, it has been uh, great. I uh, Everybody seems to really enjoy this conversation, and we yeah, want you guys to come back anytime. So, if you see me put something up and you want to get in and make a comment, you're more than welcome to jump on. Um, the next show we're having um, right here at the Woodball Show is March 18th. Uh, it'll be a men's panel. We're going back at it again. And, um, um, I really appreciate.
appreciate everybody who's come and showed out. Please uh, check out some of the vendors. Uh, I know some people eating food. How's the food? It's good. It's good. All right, she had their feeling it. So uh, if you if you if you're watching us live, you want to come over to the we got uh, Taste Heaven's food truck out there, and she's killing the game right now. So please come get something to eat. We got Mimi's chocolate, etc. Uh, desserts. We got Jay's twisted treats. We got. I'm getting, uh, we got Coach Victoria, Remedy. Victoria Carroll Designs. Carol Designs. Carol Designs. Victoria Carroll. Victoria Carroll Designs. Yeah. So knowledge, we got, knowledge Terrain. Knowledge Terrain. We got Jules. Jules. We, we, got, we got what you want. <laughs> Come get it. All right. That's it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It's more than a coin. Oh, my God.